This is a brief video on the abiogenic theory of the origin of oil and natural gas. In a nutshell, the abiogenic theory is that most oil, petroleum, natural gas, uh, what we often call fossil fuels, are actually derived from primarily methane, which was trapped in the earth when the planetary nebula condensed. So the mainstream Western theory of the origin of oil and natural gas is that when the nebula formed, it did contain methane, but it became the, the early Earth and other planets became extremely hot, and the methane burned, essentially oxidized to water and carbon dioxide primarily. And then in turn, that eventually gave us the atmosphere that we have, gave us life, and then living organisms produced oil and natural gas. They were trapped in sedimentary rock and sort of pressure cooked over millions of years into mostly oil and natural gas that we have. That's the source of gasoline, diesel fuel, heating fuel. That's uh, all over the Middle East and Southern California and other places. However, there's been for a long time a theory that in fact the oil and natural gas formed from this methane, which then polymerized into more complex hydrocarbons that make up heavier materials, coal, oil, natural gas, etc. That theory is very closely associated with the late physicist, um, excuse me, Thomas Gold. So Thomas Gold died in 2004, but he really championed and popularized this idea in the United States. He was very out of step with sort of the mainstream um, scientific um, theory. And he, late in his life, he published a book kind of summarizing his theories about this called The Deep Hot Biosphere, The Myth of Fossil Fuels, um, which I've read. And he not only postulates that the Earth is full of hydrocarbons from the planetary nebula, not from fossil fuels, but in fact that these are oxidizing within the Earth and produce the heat inside of the Earth. So it's not coming from uranium trapped in the Earth, which is the mainstream theory. But there's actually chemical combustion at a low level going on deep inside the Earth. And that's why the interior of the Earth is hot. And also that in fact living organisms probably originated in this subterranean uh, hydrocarbons that were there from the very beginning of the uh, earth and so expects and indeed we do find bacteria actually living in oil fields and so on. Uh, one thing that's important to understand is generally it used to be the case that you would be taught that oil and natural gas came from plants and animals which had been uh, pressure cooked. I remember that in school when I was a kid but that's clearly false. The oil and natural gas for the most part that we find and there is an exception I'll talk about in a minute but it is full of chemicals called halponides that come from bacteria. In fact there's very little evidence, very little of the chemicals you would expect to see if plants and animals produced oil and natural gas. So the dominant theory today, the mainstream western theory of the origin of oil and natural gas is that bacteria, small single-celled organisms, were trapped in sedimentary rock hundreds of millions of years ago and in, by some process we can't really duplicate in the lab pressure cooked into oil and natural gas and coal and so on. The alternative theory has an implication, one of a number of implications of it would be that planets like Mars, the Moon, uh, many bodies in the solar system actually must contain hydrocarbons as well inside of them and that would naturally lead to the expectation that you'd get methane which is the main hydrocarbon we're talking about uh, seeping to the surface of Mars which of course is something we may be observing so the Curiosity rover on Mars has been detecting methane intermittently for several years just made the news yet again with a particularly high amount of methane it's not really that much it's parts per billion but it was totally unexpected uh, at least by mainstream scientists, again if you believe in the deep hot biosphere and the ideas of Thomas Gold, you would expect to see this. It's likely that this would happen. And Mars would be a very good place to look for this type of methane or verify this theory. Now there are many other ways that there could be methane on Mars. It could come from, uh, Mars could have supported bacterial life, could still have bacterial life, and that was pressure cooked into methane. Or, or in fact there are living organisms underground or even some geological processes that have nothing to do with life that might produce methane. But the major point is this theory, which this is a good book on it, this is Thomas Cole's Deep Hot Biosphere, and it's, it's a sort of semi-popular book, it's not very technical, it explains his theory, and he makes a lot of strong arguments in the book that, in fact, most of the oil and natural gas, coal, etc., that we're dealing with uh, on Earth, that we find on Earth, is in fact of abio abiogenic origin, 
uh, so he makes a good case for that. Um, is there really contrary evidence to what he presents? Uh, so he presents a number of you know fascinating things. There are actually a fair number of major oil and natural gas discoveries in non-sedimentary rock. In other words, no one would have expected them to have oil and natural gas, but they do. Uh, that's been known for a long time. There are a lot of those in, in the former Soviet Union because they don't actually, many people in the former Soviet Union don't believe the fossil fuel theory. But there are ones in the West as well. And so the the point of this is that there is actually a lot of evidence for it, but the question you might ask is, well, is there contrary evidence? And yeah, in his book, um, Gold uh, concedes that lignite, which is a type of coal, is almost certainly formed from naturally compressing peat, which is actually plants. This is not bacteria, and lignite is mined all over the place, and there's a lot of evidence, and, and keep in mind, Gold is very gung-ho his own theory, there's a lot of evidence that lignite in particular is actually produced by a biological process that is actually uh, basically plants, not bacteria, that have been pressure cooked. It's worth noting it's one of the few examples where the evidence supports that the coal, if you will, is coming from plants or animals. The vast majority of oil fields that we've gone down into actually don't have plant material. They don't have plant chemicals from the membranes, from the constituents of plants. What they do have are chemicals called hopanoids and some other chemicals that are characteristic of bacteria, which was a surprise, but it's now the mainstream theory that most of the oil and natural gas on Earth is coming from mm -hmm. uh, excuse me, bacteria that were trapped in sedimentary rocks over time. But that, in a nutshell, is the abiogenic theory of the origin of oil and natural gas. And if you want to find out a lot more about it, Probably, there are a lot of online sources and so on, but you probably should go to Deep Hot Biosphere, get a copy of it, or check it out if you're a library, if you have access to a good library. Um, but there's a lot of work that's been done on this theory, and I can't do justice to it in a short video. Uh, this video was produced on Monday, June 24th, 2019.